At the start of last summer, I was spending a lot of time practicing my golf. There was never really any structure to that practice. I wasn't tracking what I was doing. I wasn't sure if I was working on the right things and I didn't know if I was spending the right amount of time on long game, short game, putting, etc, etc. And then I put together this practice plan and that all changed. Suddenly, I genuinely felt like I was getting better with every single practice session. The time I was spending practicing felt so much more efficiently used than ever before. And the handicap went from nine to five in the space of one month. The practice program that I follow is very closely based on a program that I found online which is apparently used by eight college golf teams in America. If you don't know, college golf in America is basically a really high level of golf for young players. There's loads of PJ Tour pros who've come through the college system. Now obviously, I can't 100% guarantee that this is what they use because like I said, I found it online and apparently you can't believe everything that you read on the internet. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? I never thought of that. This is terrible. What if none of it's true? What if they're all lying? How would we ever know? But whether they use it or not, like I said, it's made a massive difference to my game. So I said it's based on the program that I found because I've added some of the best drills that I found in books or that were given to me by a few different coaches. And I think the end result is a program which is brilliant if you want to get better at golf, whether you're a beginner or an elite player. So the first thing you want to do is go and get the spreadsheet. I'll put a link down below. I use it on a Google Doc because it means that I can access that on my phone when I'm out practicing, which means that I can tick things off as I go through it and put in any scores that I want to track rather than having to write that down and then put it in when I get home or trying to remember it and then forgetting what I've scored by the time I get back. The basic idea is that you go through the spreadsheet in whatever order suits you with the aim of completing the whole thing. My aim last summer was always to complete the whole thing in a week, but I never quite managed that despite the fact I was obviously putting in quite a lot of hours. So depending on how much time your plan is put in, if you're only going to be doing half an hour, an hour a week, you're obviously going to want to either strip back the plan or say to yourself, well, I'm going to try and do it over the course of a month or two months or whatever. Just do whatever works for you. So let's run through the plan. So at the very top of the plan, and usually the first thing I do in a week is holding 25 three foot putts in a row. I'll put six tee pegs around one hole and just work my way around until I've got to 25. If you miss one, you have to start again. I normally start going in the opposite direction after I've got to 12. Now, sometimes I'll nail this first time, sometimes it will take me bloody ages, but ultimately it makes me a lot better at holding three foot putts out on the course where it matters. And there's obviously that fun little bit of pressure, you get to 21, 22, 23, 24 on the last putt, there is quite a bit of tension there, which is good preparation for when you've got a nervy little three footer in a match or a competition. So the next part of the practice schedule is basically lag putting. So I'll normally go straight from the three footers into the 20 foot lag putts. So I'll just take out one of the tees that I had in there to kind of leave a little space for me to get my putts into that circle. This one shouldn't be too difficult, but again, as soon as you fail with one ball, you have to start again with the aim of getting 20 in a row. I only use three balls when I do this drill because I think if you've got 20 balls there, by the time you've got 10 in that circle, they're gonna be sort of knocking into each other and then it's gonna be harder to tell if the putt that you've hit would have stayed in that circle had it not deflected off another ball. So as you can see from the schedule, I'll also do that drill from 30 feet and 45 feet, but I'll do that on completely different days just to break it up. I've never even got close to completing the 20 in a row from 45 feet, but on the spreadsheet, as you can see, if I complete something, I'll turn it green and either put a yes in there if it's a simple case of did I do it, yes or no, or if it's something where there's a kind of skill test number result, I'll put the number in there. If I've spent a bit of time on it, giving it a good go but not succeeded, I'll turn that box orange to show myself that I did at least try it that week, and then I'll put the number in there of kind of the best attempt that I made. So if I made nine putts from 45 feet in a row in that circle, I'll turn the box orange and put a nine in there. That means that I can look at it as the weeks go on and see, okay, I still haven't completed it, but my best was three before, and then it got to four, five, seven, nine. Next up is Killer, which if you haven't done it before, is a brilliant game, which again, really tests your putting under pressure. So you wanna put tee pegs in a straight line, starting at three feet from the hole, and then at one foot intervals until you get up to 10 feet. You start at the first tee, and if you hold a putt from there, you move back to the next one. The goal is to hold a putt from each tee, working out, so your final putt will be from the final tee, which is a 10 footer. Got three lives, hence the three balls. If you miss a putt, you lose a life, and you stay on that tee until you hold one from there. 
this gets pretty tense when you're on your last life and you need to hold a 10 footer to get it done. This next drill called the overtake game is brilliant for developing feel and ensuring that you never leave a makeable putt short. So what you want to do is find a stretch of putting green that's out of the way, you don't need a hole, put a tee peg in where you're going to be hitting your putts from, then take two decent sized steps forward and put another tee peg in there. Then take three strides forward and place another tee peg. First putt you hit has to go past the first tee but not past the second one. Each subsequent putt you hit has to overtake the previous ball. You get one point if you successfully overtake the previous ball but it's minus one point if you come up short and as soon as you hit a putt that goes past the final tee that's game over. 10 points is quite a good target for this one. Next up is a pretty simple three foot compass drill. So you take a three foot putt from the four opposite sides of the same hole. So a downhiller, an uphiller, a left to right and a right to left. If your putting green has got nine holes, as mine does, I'll do this once on each of the nine holes and that'll give me a total score out of 36. Obviously 36 out of 36 is the goal. The best I've done is 35 and I missed the final putt. Next on the spreadsheet is exactly the same thing but from six feet. So again, you'll get a total score out of 36 best I've done there is 27. By the way, where appropriate, I've put a kind of PGA Tour average stat that relates to the particular drill. So for example, from six feet, PGA Tour pros hole 70.59% of putts. That works out as 25 out of the 36, so that's a good target. Next up is something imaginatively titled the 20 T game, and you guessed it, you need 20 tees. So find a hole with a bit of room around it, and set out tees at one foot intervals, starting three feet from the hole on diagonals. So you've got one row that's downhill left to right, one row that is downhill right to left, a row that's uphill left to right, and a row that's uphill right to left. Basically, you take each tee peg out once you've held a putt from that spot. You can do them in any order you like. I tend to work around in circles, starting with the shorter ones and working my way back. You keep account of how many putts you've hit in total, including ones that miss and ones that go in. And the idea is that the fewer total putts you've taken until you've taken out all the tees, the better you've scored. So obviously 20 would be a perfect score if you'd hold every putt the first time. And the final piece of putting practice is called the 10 foot putt challenge. This is a great one to challenge your mates on. There's actually been money changing hands at my club on the putting green since I introduced this. Basically you put a tee peg in the ground, 10 feet from the hole, and that's gonna be your starting point. You get two points for holding a putt, and the goal is to get to 10 points as quickly as you can, but you lose one point any time you come up short or three putt. So obviously the best you can do is five putts. If you hold the first five putts, two points each, that's 10 points. But if you bring one up short, that's minus one. If you miss a few, obviously then you get more and more putts. Now I've seen people do this in anything from about eight putts up to 60 odd. But it's a great drill for making sure that you reach the hole and putts of this length when really you should be giving yourself a chance to hold it but also not just gunning it five feet past and missing the one back. We all know what that feels like. As you can probably guess, or as you'll notice when you start to do some of them, some of the challenges can be quite frustrating and take quite a long time to get through. But that is kind of the point. If you can't complete the first part, the three foot putts, for example, that's a pretty clear sign that you're not that good at holding three foot putts, and that's probably gonna be costing you some shots during the average round of golf. So it's a good idea to spend more time practicing them. So that's putting sorted, but like I've said, I would never suggest doing all of those in one go. I would spread the putting out across the week. I've just laid it out this way because it makes the most sense. So next up is chipping. First things first, I'll mark out a three foot circle around a hole on the chipping green. And the goal is to get eight out of 10 balls in that circle from a distance of 30 feet. So again, you just keep trying it until you get at least eight out of 10 in that circle. Next thing is called the chipping compass. And basically on my putting green, there's only four holes, but if you've got more or less on your putting green, you can kind of tweak it to suit you. But basically I hit four chips to each hole on the green from above the green, below the green, left of the green and right of the green. So that makes 64 chips in total. And my score is how many out of that 64 I can get to finish within three feet of the target. And the final part of the chipping practice is something called the part 18 chipping challenge. So you put yourself in what you call an easy spot to get up and down, and see if you can get down in two from there. You do three easy ones, three medium, and three hard, but all in different positions. So don't do the same easy one three times or the same medium one three times. So each one is effectively a par two because you're trying to get up and down. So 18 is a level par score. Now obviously what counts as easy, medium, and hard is completely subjective, but I would say as long as you're not killing yourself, 
giving yourself the easiest up and down in the world and calling it hard and you're fairly consistent over time it'll all work out personally i class easy as something that if i had it out on the course i'd be really hoping to get it up and down nine times out of ten so fair bit of green to work with reasonable line nothing too tricky about it medium a bit more challenging than that so maybe not so much green to work with or coming out of the rough or just a much longer shot and i class hard as something that if you had it out on the course during a round and you did manage to get it up and down your playing partners would be really impressed so you might be talking about a flop shot over a bunker or a plug lie coming out the sand you know a really tricky shot with no green to work with anything like that next up pitching so top of the list 30 yards and you've got to get 10 pitches in a row to finish within 15 feet of your chosen target. Next one is alignment stick pitches. This isn't a skill test or something that you've got to get a certain number of. It's more of a technique groover. I've spoken about it before in a video ages ago, but basically you just grip the alignment stick like this so it kind of runs alongside your shaft and you hit pitch shots, making sure that that stick doesn't slam into the side of your body as you hit the shot you'll find that if you flip it with your hands, that stick's gonna be tucking into your left-hand side. Whereas if you keep your body and your arms nice and connected and just turn through as the pros do, that stick won't hit you. Do it with some practice swings first, but you can also hit balls with it. Next up is baskets. Now at my range, we have these little baskets. So I'll put one out at 50 yards and my goal is to get five balls in there. And on another day, I'll do the same thing from 75 yards. Now obviously you might not have the exact same kind of baskets at your range, but hopefully you'll have some kind of target or you can set a pretty little narrow gap of what counts as a good shot and you keep going until you've hit five successful ones in there. Not five in a row, just five in total. Next up, moving on to bunkers and quite simply, you've just got to get 10 in a row out of the bunker to stop on the green. It's quite useful in that you're obviously not focusing on getting it close to a hole. And I think at times we can all get a bit cute when playing out of bunkers, trying to knock it stiff. Whereas generally, if you stick it on the green and give yourself a chance with a putt, but leave it worse to two putt, that is a lot better than getting too fancy and ending up leaving it in the bunker or flying it across the green, trying to get to a back pin. Next thing is seven out of 10 shots to finish within the length of a flag stick. I'm talking about a normal height flag stick, not one of these little ones that you might have on the chipping green. It's not an exact measure. I think the average flag is about seven or eight feet, but just make what you think is a fair call. You know, is it a good shot? Do you think it's within the length of a flag stick or not? Next up, you've got five in a row on the green from the bunker but with you standing outside. Now this is good preparation for those horrible shots where you can't get in the bunker when your mates have got their cameras out waiting for you to fall in. They're the kind of shots that nobody ever practices but we all get them every now and again. And they're the kind of ones where if you get it in a comp and you get it wrong, you can be racking up big numbers. And similar story here when you've got to get seven out of 10 on the green from a plugged or really difficult lie. So let's say you've got a horrible downhill lie in the bunker or you're right up against the lip. Again, these aren't shots that most people practice. When we practice bunker shots, we go in there and give ourselves a perfect sandy, fluffy lie, but we don't always get that when we're out on the course in competition. You get horrible plug lies, you get downhill ones, and you think, oh God, what am I gonna do with this? I'm not practiced this. Well, with this practice schedule, you will have, so it won't be a problem. For irons, it's all pretty simple. So basically, I'll just practice the six shot types. So high draw, low draw, high fade, low fade, straight ball and stinger. And then as you can see, you just do that with different clubs on different days. Next one is something called the single arm drill. So basically hold the club in just your right hand, make three practice swings and then hit a ball again, just with your right hand. Then do the same thing with your left hand and then hit a shot normally with both arms. Now this can be quite difficult at first, but when you get better at hitting it with one hand, it is amazing how much easier it feels when you put both hands on. It almost feels like you're cheating. What I would say is when you are doing the practice swings, treat each one as an individual swing. So kind of pause briefly at the bottom at address. So you're not just swinging it back and forth like a madman. Okay, next up is a little driving accuracy test. Now, if the course is absolutely dead, you can find a hole out there, take a load of practice balls and do it on the course. The idea is to get six out of 10 to finish on the fairway. More likely you'll be doing it on the driving range. So just pick up two points that are about a fairways width apart and use that as your target. And then I'll also do the six trajectories with the driver. So high draw, low draw, high fade, low fade, straight, and a low one. And then at the bottom, you can see there's also space to keep track of any nine hole and 18 hole rounds that you've played in that week. I'll generally put an asterisk next to them if they're in competitions. And that's it, I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions whatsoever, just put them down below and I'll reply to them all. Now obviously I'm not a golf coach, so I'm not saying that you absolutely have to follow this plan. 
I'm just saying that it worked really well for me. A lot of people have been asking me for the kind of practice that I do, so I thought I might as well show you. What I would say is, even if you don't like this plan or any part of it, it is a good idea to have some kind of plan. Even if you've only got half an hour once a week, it's better to be going to the practice ground, knowing exactly what you're gonna work on in that session, rather than just turning up, getting some balls and thinking, oh, I'll just hit these, because then you leave that session having not really achieved anything worthwhile. Trust me, I've done enough of that in the past and I know from experience that it didn't make me any better. If you are going to use the plan, I would recommend as much as possible tracking your scores and various things so that over time you can see whether you're getting better and you can see where your weaknesses lie and focus on them. So I'll leave it there because I'm sure this video has been long enough already. But like I say, hope it's been useful. Any questions, let me know down below and I'll see you in the future. So thank God that's over. <laughs> I mean, it's over, right? There's not, there's not more, right?